ladies and gentlemen, the SAA formation. Mr. Chakana was a valued member of SAA, was respected by both, all the stakeholders internally, and I also get a sense from all the media uh, pronouncements that Mr. Chakana was a, 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 a supported and respected from outside. Well, good evening and welcome to Unfiltered on SABC 3 and Channel 404. I'm Desiree Chauke. On Friday, the chairperson of the South African Airways, JB Magwaza, announced that come Monday, the airline would have a new acting chief executive officer, Zukisa Aramasia. This follows the resignation of its ninth CEO in 10 years. Vuyani Jahana handed in his resignation letter, which was leaked to the media. In it, he cites, among other challenges, the uncertainty around government funding, and the SAA needing around 21.7 billion rand to stay afloat until the 2021 to 2022 financial period. This is despite billions of rands uh, of bailouts already having been pumped into the operation over the last few years. The recent events have yet again reignited the debate on whether South Africa needs a state-owned airline, or rather, can we afford it? Our guest tonight is Zuki Saramasia, who is the interim CEO of the SAA. We will also speak to the executive chairman of NMT Capital, Sangwan Zaluba. Uh, he wrote a piece today about uh, the events at the SAA, and we'll talk to him about his thoughts. And later on the show, I'll be joined by activist and analyst Kaya Sitore for further analysis of events at the SAA. Let's now uh, welcome in Ms. Ramasia. Uh, congratulations in order, I suppose. Thank you. Um, a lot of interest in your appointment uh, makes sense, uh, this country significance of this asset. Um, uh, you are essentially in a caretaker position, presumably for about three months. Mm -hmm. What have you been briefed is your are your deliverables within this time? Good evening, Desiree, and good evening to the listeners of Unfiltered. Um, as you have just mentioned that I am only starting on Tuesday, but however, when the chairperson of the board as well as the board uh, address the staff as well as the media, one thing that they mentioned to all of us, being myself as one of the SAA people, is that uh, we need to stay focused on the implementation of our strategy. So I am meeting the board tomorrow, but I already know that what they are talking, they're gonna be talking to me about is that we have to stay on course and ensure that we deliver on the strategy that Mr. Jahan has been championing for yes. the past 18 months. You're correct that you already know because you've had the benefit of being part of the management and executive for about 20 uh, decades. In your opinion, what is hindering progress at the SAA? Well, um, I would say that uh, SAA, I, I think most people talk about their revolving door. So SAA has had a strategy from, from 2012, which we call the long turnaround strategy. Now, the much talked about long turnaround strategy. Yes. So our long turnaround strategy hasn't changed. And uh, every CEO or every board member, or in fact, we have tested it with, uh, with, uh, with the analysts and many people that have done the turnaround strategy. They believe it's the right strategy. So it's evidence-based. It's evidence-based. And what's nice about it is that it was designed by the people of South African Airways, having gone through various changes that has happened there. Yeah. But of course, you know, leadership is very important. Leadership stability is very important. So I think the, the, what to answer your question is, is leadership instability. Because everybody will know what you're supposed to be doing. The staff knows what to be doing. Of course, when there's a new leader, everybody wants to know that, do they believe in the strategy yeah. that we have? Yes, I think that would be the reason. Talk of an investigation into whether Vuyani Jahana leaked his resignation, resignation letter to the media. Mm. Does this exist? Are you going to continue with it? Is that going to fall into your lap in terms of responsibility? Uh, are you talking about the investigation? Investigation into whether he leaked his letter in, uh, to the media, his resignation letter. 
Well, it wouldn't be because I'm an interim uh, chief executive, irrespective, even if I was permanent, it's a purview of the board, really, because every uh, CEO reports to the board. So you cannot, uh, you cannot investigate your counterpart. You What's know? going to be your interaction with him until August? Uh, whenever I want any information from him, he will be giving him. I mean, we've got a good, sound relationship from when he came up until now. Yeah. And like I said, he's been championing the strategy. So our relationship is good. He's going to give the information as I require from him. In that media briefing on Friday, it was stated that about 4 billion rand is needed uh, to survive the current financial year. Between your payroll, fuel prices and aging aircraft, mm -hmm. what are the most uh, important uh, uh, cost items for you and where are you going to be focusing on in, in the foreseeable future? The most co cost item that you have really is the interest on, on what you already owe, really, like you've just mentioned the 21 uh, billion. So, you know, when, when you owe a lot, that amount of money, or when you need that amount of money, or when you go to the bank, the fact that uh, you, there's a lot of money that you need or to, to service your debt, as well as even as, a, as, as, as money that you need to do your work, you yeah. know, your, your cash. So, really, to service your debt, it, it, it really, uh, uh, the interest is too much for that. But uh, one of the things that is uh, expensive, I think, that you want to know in South African airlines is also the maintenance. You know, our aging fleet as well, they come into the fore. Because like your, like in, like your car, as your car ages, it becomes, you know, more expensive to maintain. It is out of warranty. Yeah. So that, the aircraft, the maintenance, as well as servicing the debt is expensive. So even though Mr. Jahana is leaving, mm -hmm. the issues that he raised do not go away. How mm -hmm. are you going to overcome those? Uh, we have uh, the the as a, as a as a leader right now. I've got the executive team. We've got a strategy to work on. Now, anything that he has raised is raised really for the board and is raised for the shareholder. Our responsibility is to ensure we stay on course. We focus. We deliver on what we need to deliver. Any other thing, because now I'll be leading the team. I will probably. Uh, talking to our shareholder, yeah. no, no, to our board through the shareholder, in our shareholder through the board, sorry, okay, I'm mixing those two, yes, so definitely that's what we'll be doing. To you ensure. reckon you will have sufficient influence to be able to make it, ha make it happen? No, absolutely, because I mean, uh, as a person or as a captain at this point in time, I have a responsibility to flag out the things that may uh, cause the, These the, are the same things that uh, successive CEOs previously have not been able to get right. How do you think you will get it right? There's, you know, in, in a state-owned um, enterprise, you have your processes on how to flag things. So I have a responsibility to first check with my with the, my executive team. Then from there, we have the show, we have the board members, yeah. and we bring to the board members, and the board members bring to the shoulder. And I think the shoulder are aware of the things that needs to be fixed in the state-owned uh, enterprise called South African Airways. Another stakeholder that you will have to be interacting with mm -hmm. is your human capital. And there is seemingly a power struggle between the SAA and its pilots. What kind of conversations are taking place there? And uh, they, they're seemingly not very happy about your appointment. I'm not aware of that. That they're not happy about my, my appointment. They've publicly come out to say that they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that the, the airline union uh, make sure that Mr. Jahana comes back. Okay, that will be the cabin crew members' uh, unions, not the SAPA. So we've got SAKA and SAPA. Okay. SAKA is means South African Airways Cabin Crew Members Union. So it's but there not will about be a need for conversations absolutely. Between, with both stakeholders. Absolutely. In fact, we've got five unions and there are uh, uh, prevalent stakeholders. It will be really naive of me not to take them into my confidence and share. The, they already know the strategy, yeah. but to work with them all the way in order to get the, the SAA back on track. So definitely they are, they are very important stakeholders. So last week, Telcom released its financial uh, mm. results showing that they're in a very healthy mm. position, mm. Uh, showing that they've benefited from partial privatization. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're asking our viewers that question, is there still a need uh, for a state-owned uh, airline? Mm. 
Are there any such conversations taking place at, high, at, at a higher level within the SAA with your stakeholder in terms of your ownership structure? Well, not that it has come to my attention, but as I say that, you know, things like uh, stake, that uh, privatization, privatization is really a purview of, of the shareholder. Yeah. So right now, from where I'm standing, as I said, I'm only starting on Tuesday. I do not know anything well I served in the, I'm yeah. serving in the executive of SAA. That hasn't been part of, of what we have discussed. Well, in interviews following that announcement at Telcom, your mm. counterpart at Telcom, Sipo Masoko, said that Telcom's success was mm. thanks to its buffer against political aids mm -hmm. and a supportive board. What's your relationship with your board um, and the political heads that uh, control the SAA? This will be crucial in achieving your goals. Absolutely. A relationship with the board is very crucial because those are the people, anything that you want to do, you have to go to them and check with them that are on course. Is it talking to the strategy in place? And if you want to influence anything to change, you have to do it through your board members. Currently, really, I have known because, you know, as an executive, you, you are part of a subcommittee of a board. So uh, as part of the subcommittee of the board, I've worked well with the board members that are yep. there. So I'm thinking it will not be, uh, it wouldn't be that difficult to influence them. And the fact that they chose me to act, to the, uh, uh, to act for the next few months, it means they have confidence We have in to wrap to up our conversation, it. but uh, <laughs> for you... Is this a serious position for you? Um, do you understand the conversations that are taking place outside of the SAA in terms of the importance of this asset? It is very important. This is a national asset. We all have a responsibility to make sure that SAA really succeeds. So if really for me, when I took that responsibility, I took it based on the fact that I've worked there for 27 years and I know what's happening there and yeah. I have a responsibility to help with my team to take it forward. Thank you for coming through tonight. Zuki Saramasia is the acting CEO at SAA. Let's take a look at your views on uh, social media. All right, uh, Andres uh, Matisson says, if SAA was run properly, it couldn't even be a uh, revenue generator for government. But with the latest bailout of 44 billion, it dictates there are serious management failures that are being revealed as a taxpayer. Why not refocus SAA's international routes to be more profitable? That's actually another question I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Masia, but we obviously didn't have uh, sufficient time. Takalani Shadukudiwa Sakujiwa says, no, the state has failed to run all 300 SOEs and that enormously results on high rate of unemployment. Uh, Mr. Kamunga says, yes, uh, so long run properly without annual cap in hand, cash requests from taxpayers, Ethiopian Airlines is state owned and profitable. Why can't SAA ask for tips? Those are your views on social media. ZB Mohopong community page saying the answer is yes. We can't have airline that collapsed by individuals with no experience and loot our money for doing nothing in our offices and resign after a couple of months. Um, uh, that's uh, ZB Mohopong there. Let's uh, take a short commercial break. Our discussion continues when we come back. SABC News mobile app is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. Stay connected with the latest in breaking news. Watch the SABC News channel along with clips and live streams of all the big news events. And listen to all the SABC News radio stations live, including podcasts and much more. Simply download the SABC News app to your Android or iOS device from either the Play Store or the App Store. SABC News. Independent. Impartial.
Balets Lim Tetwa joins us now live. MNS attorneys were mandated to conduct these reports and investigations. What sort of processes did they follow? We heard uh, Tiamo explaining that they worked with actuarial scientists <coughs> in order to uh, investigate yeah. these transactions. Slap suits, tell us more about this. The concept of slap suits, which is a litigation often used by big companies uh, to silence critics. We as civil society won't stand for this kind of intimidation and harassment. If you come to South Africa, you need to obey the obligations that you have in terms of the laws of this country, including environmental laws. Hello, I'm Nana, and I want to tell you a bit about Economics Unbound. It is a live studio current affairs program that brings an understanding of the economy, how it operates, and how it is managed. The show seeks to include ordinary South Africans in purposeful and well informed discussions about the economy. For you to be in business, you need to work with other businesses. While providing them with enough information to make better economic and financial decisions. Bringing informal sectors into a formal economy and making it more inclusive. Any business opportunity that is below one million must be given to a township entrepreneurship. Through this program, audiences can look forward to 30 minutes of deep and tough questioning on the issues of the week. To whom does women's unpaid work go? Welcome back. Uh, this is Unfiltered. We're asking you, does South Africa need a national carrier? That's our discussion tonight on SABC3 and Channel 404. Remember to engage in this debate on Twitter and Facebook using the hashtags at SABC News Online or as SABC News Unfiltered. Uh, to further this conversation, we now welcome analyst Kaya Sitola, who's also an accountant, but you also call yourself a crusader for social justice. I was young when that happened. <laughs> yeah. You were listening in on the conversation. Your thoughts? Uh, look, I think obviously the key issues re relating to SAA are probably well known to the public now. It is struggling as an airline. But I think for me, before we get to the question of whether the country needs a state-owned airline, it really should be, we should be starting by saying that the country has state-owned assets. And the question should be, should politicians be as actively involved in the management and the governance of, the, of those particular uh, companies as they are? And I think that's really where the start of the problem is. So start by getting rid of the politicians and the over uh, extension of influence that they have in really how these entities are run. And let's see what happens. And if later on it turns out that the entities are not viable at all, yeah. then we can start about closing the, talk about closing the double. How off, achievable is that? Um, <laughs> it's difficult. It is very difficult because what you really want to be able to say here is we want to be able to say to the politicians, please be aware that your expertise is in politics and not in fiduciary duties or governance yeah. matters. And if your expertise is in politics, please specialize in that and let people who are actually experts at running businesses be given the freedom and the autonomy to do so. And I think, obviously, to then try and get politicians to understand that sometimes they really need to take a step back is going to be our biggest challenge. I was saying earlier to the acting CEO about the assertions of Sipo Maseko at Telcom um, that uh, a supportive board and, uh, as you say, politicians who don't meddle. What are your thoughts on the SAA board? Look, I do think that the key thing about these particular boards is who exactly do they champion primarily? Do they champion the interests of the company? Do they back the CEO? Or do they simply say, we've been appointed as politicians, so therefore we need to implement whatever the politicians want us to do? And I think sometimes we get the balance in the wrong direction where literally the board says, we are going to defer and sort of say whatever the minister or the political principal asks us to do, we are then going to force our executives to do so. It yeah. shouldn't be that case. This board it should, be, it should be the one that says, we are going to protect and defend our executives no matter which politician prevails in the day particularly when you've got so much upheavals and so many shuffles at the political level the stability would come from the inside and not from the outside to then sacrifice your own CEO because you have to placate whoever emerges as a new political principal is remarkably dangerous what are your thoughts on the incoming acting CEO I think obviously having been a person who's been at SAA for such a long time, she's probably the most senior remaining person within the airline, so of course she's going to try and see how she can steer the ship. Again, the issues remain. The issues that Jahana released, um, highlighted in his letter, unless those issues are addressed overnight, it's difficult to imagine how anyone, not just this particular acting CEO, but how any other human being could ever survive at running an airline of this nature. So the key question here is that in spite of the fact that Jahana will not be around for the remainder of the week, we need to be able to go back to the substance of the things that he said and, te and then test. Are, they, are, are, these substantial, are these issues substantiated? Yeah. And if they are, how can they then be resolved so that whoever emerges as 
the next permanent CEO doesn't have to deal with the type of bureaucracy and the type of pushback that Johanna says he was faced to deal with. Why do you think that uh, National Treasury was dragging its, its feet on this? I think, of course, the reality is that we are struggling as a country. We do not have a lot of money to spend on particular projects. And I think this is probably one where the National Treasury guys felt you could defer the decision until later on. It wasn't the type of thing that if you don't pay them or if you don't give them the bailout at a particular date, then everything falls apart. It was always subject to negotiations. You can simply say, we are committing to making a decision within reasonable time frames, and you can always keep that conversation going with the lenders. So I do think that they probably still try to find a way of saying, here's the money, here's the, the money is being made available, and this is what needs to be done in order for you know the right decisions to be made. But I think that for a country that's struggling to, with competing priorities, it was always a matter of let us push as far as we can down the line and see how long we can keep it going. Events at the SAA fall <coughs> into the greater conversation of the reconfiguration of SOEs and looking at how best uh, to place them. What are, what are your thoughts on this, on, on this overall conversation? I think the conversation is important and while the conversation is important is that even now a lot of people don't even understand the business justification for why some SOEs exist. Yeah. The big question is should government be involved in business or should government simply stick to formulating the policy that allows businesses to thrive. And of course there are particular justifications. There are some entities or some industries that couldn't, that couldn't be initiated by private enterprise okay. because of the I'm cost associated I'm going to ask you to hold on to your thoughts there because we're time tight but another opinion that came out on events at the SAA was from Sangon Zaluba who is the co-founder of Sizu and Zaluba Gobodo uh, saying that uh, the title the item or rather the article was titled a dream deferred for state entities where you, he asserts that uh, in Jahana and Khadebe we've lost qualified and competent black executives that could be and there could be more casualties. Mr. Nsaluba, a very good evening to you. Is there a concerted effort to render black executives ineffective? Hi, 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 Desiree. Thank you very much first to, to you and, um, and, and the listeners. Oh, you, you know, you know I mean, it's a debate which you must take in a broader sense. Um, in terms of various areas, um, it could well be, I don't think there's a group of people who sit in darkness and play that, but that's how it's coming out to be. Uh, the structures which are being set up, the lack of support, which is not there, and undefined boundaries of where board starts and executive start, it leads us to believe that um, uh, black executives are really being set up for failure and then uh, we create a narrative that, uh, you know, black people or black executives are no good and so on and so on. Taking on from there, you also assert that the lack of government support is setting up these CEOs of SOEs for failure. Uh, can you expand on that? It, 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 I mean, the, the concept is quite simple because um, if government decides to participate in a business space, they are participating in a space that is well defined. Government cannot come with its own new, untested uh, the government procedures and structures. So it only starts with saying the government does it want to be involved in these entities or not. That's a question they must answer for themselves. And if they do say they want to be involved, the next question is going to be do they know what it takes? Do they have the resources to support? Once they define all of those, then they must move out and then appoint a government structure like a board of directors to say operate within these parameters and this is what we have to do this is the mandate and in government um it it, it, it becomes even easier because there's a compact that gets signed between the the, the board and, and and the ministry that uh, that oversees that particular entity and then the board must get on with its work which is well defined in terms of king in terms of pfma in terms of everybody Get on with the job. One of the responsibilities is to appoint the leader of the organization, the executive leader, that is. And they must go through the process. And once they've done so, then they must move off and allow that executive to appoint a team which will execute according to the mandate given by the board. Sounds what about then happens is sometimes the crossing of these lines where you find a shareholder representative is perceived at least uh, to behave like an executive or a board which matters in that space, or even the executive which bypasses the board and starts developing a direct relationship with the shareholder representative. 
uh, to the exclusion of the board. So that's where the lines get played. We're going to have to end it there, but thank you so much for your thoughts this evening. Let's take a break. Um, you're watching Unfiltered. Welcome back. Just to wrap up our conversation, Kaya, that assertion by Mr. Nzaluba that capable and competent and qualified black executives are being set up for failure. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's looking like that is indeed the case because wherever you look, whether you're looking at ESCOM or SAA in particular, it looks like everybody who was willing to put up their hand and say, I'm willing to come in and step in and assist here is not given the type of support. And of course, by the time they leave, the report card doesn't say that this person left glorious. It's always an acrimonious exit. We saw even tomorrow, Jahanna's three-month notice period will not even be required to be served. So, of course, it communicates the wrong perception that the person was actually shifted out rather than lived on good terms. The fact that none of them complete that term, of course, indicates that they get into these spaces and then whatever they had in mind doesn't seem to materialize. So it is an ongoing problem, it's a recurring problem, and we all know the common denominator is, yeah. is the involvement of these politicians. Let's thank you again for your time this evening. And as we close the show, let's take, take a look at the poll that we were running uh, this evening, where we were asking you if there is still a need for a state-run airline. And 54% uh, of you agree, and 46% say no. That has been your Unfiltered this evening with me, Desiree Chauke. Thank you so much for making the time to watch and all the interest you showed on social media. Quite remarkable. Thank you so much. Good night.